This is the Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy Podcast. Welcome to the podcast that talks everything agronomy and only agronomy, tackling current agronomy topics, management strategies, and covering topics generated from our listeners. On this episode, we will discuss current planting and management considerations. And now your hosts, DuPont Pioneer Field Agronomists Josh Schaffner and Brian Buck. Well, Josh, things are rolling along out there. Weather looks really good. Planting conditions look really good. I think we see a lot of planters out in the field. Yeah, it's been amazing. This is probably some of the best conditions we've seen in in several years. And the future 10, 15 day forecast looks favorable. Uh, I don't really see any reason not to be out there getting started on corn planting. Yeah, it's amazing when you look at the 14 day forecast and you see such consistent temperatures. You know, it's right in that 65 to 70 range you know, for two weeks straight, which is really ideal for this corn coming out of the ground as we see soil temps, you know, in that 50 to 60 to even, it'll be 65 here shortly range. Oh, absolutely. And really, Brian, on this show, we really want to cover just a few of the the big questions we've had the last week. You know, number one, Brian, the big question we have, anytime you get an April, you know, that gets dried up, gets fit early, the big question is, should we be planting this early or not? And my short answer to that question is simply, we should be planting yes. Yeah, when you look at it, you know, I've had the question about cold shock and some of these other things coming in. And, you know, cold shock is an environmental thing, not a not a calendar date. So, you know, we just talked about those temps being very favorable and the soil temps being very, you know, good. By the time the temp would turn around, if it would, I think the corn's going to be out of the ground and we're probably not going to have to worry too much about something like that. Yeah, I totally agree. And also looking on the forecast, you know, you so you talked about a lot of warm temperature. The night temps are staying in the mid-40s and really... With temperatures like that, even if we were to get a half inch or an inch of rain, Brian, our risk of any cold injury is basically limited to almost nothing, in my opinion, based on those temps. Yeah, when you really think about it, we have extremely good temperatures for getting corn out of the ground, but even more importantly, the soil couldn't be more fit. So when you think about having fit soil, that's really what sets up good yield and good emergence overall. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and I, you know, our opinion, the ground is working great. The residue breakdown was great from last winter. Um, conditions say, you know, the big thing is, Brian, it is getting a little bit dry. I can't say that we're, you know, I, I, how do we define dry at this stage? For the time, the conditions are perfect. But, you know, the one thing, Brian, with corn planting, we do want to be watching is planting depth. You know, again, looking at 10 to 15 days, it maybe could stay warm and dry and windy. We want to make sure we got that that seed down in, in uniform moisture. And really that two-inch mark is something that we really got to watch with planting conditions like this. Yeah, pretty much everywhere there's really good moisture at two inches yet. When you do, if you miss shallow this year, especially if it does stay dry the next two weeks, that could really make for uneven emergence if you miss it like an inch or something like that. Um, there's not a lot of moisture there, and if it doesn't imbibe all at the same time and take that moisture and to germinate, that's what makes that uneven stand coming out of the ground, which really does hurt yield quite a bit. So that's really important. Try to stay in that two inches, and if it does stay really dry and you're still planting a week or two from now, you know, make sure you're planting into moisture. If you need to go to two and a quarter, that's fine to hit some moisture. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that kind of, you know, summarizing, you know, our, the question of the week, should it be planning? You know, our short answer is yes. Make sure we got that depth where we need it to be. And other than that, I, I think just keep rolling. And uh, if we do, I anticipate to see some, some really phenomenal stands and get this crop underway and, and really off to a, a great start to the 2016 growing season. Brian, the other big question, and maybe not the, so I've had a few questions on it, but something we want to be thinking about is nitrogen management. Um, you know, in our geography, we have a, a lot of urea applications to the east, still a lot of spring uh, anhydrous ammonia applications taking place to the west. And obviously, when we get warm and dry like this, we want to be thinking about how do we make sure we're, we're uh, not losing nitrogen from a, a standpoint of not sealing or volatilization up to the atmosphere. Yeah, so starting out, let's talk about anhydrous first. So you think about anhydrous ammonia, when you put it out there, it comes out as a gas form, right? And it attaches to water within the soil, and that's how it adheres in the soil. So as the soil gets dry, I think some things you have to be concerned about, it's going to move a little farther in the soil. And also, you know, can you seal it well enough when you're putting it on, you know, to make sure it's not moving up in the soil profile, because that can cause some injury uh, to seedling plants and even actually, you know, make germination not happen if it's if it's worked bad enough. Yeah, and the big thing as it gets dry, it's just making sure we got those injection knives deep enough. We want them to be a solid six to eight inches. 
if we're down in that range, we got good soil moisture down there still, Brian. We should be sealing good. But with that said, you and I were we're out working on some plot works this week, and, and we saw some anhydrous going on where we were, were seeing some marginal seal and a lot of escape uh, kind of from not sealing good. So it is something that we've seen a little bit taking place, and it's something that uh, we want to keep a close eye on. The other thing, Brian, as we get dry soil, sometimes you know that initial injection site can be a little bit marginal, or maybe it doesn't uh, that it can be a little bit higher risk planning into that. And the biggest way to, to make sure that we don't have an issue with that is after your ammonia application, you're making that field finisher pass. If you're still smelling ammonia coming up through the ground, probably a situation where we want to wait until we get some moisture and maybe come back later and work that field. Yeah. And you know, some things you can do to, to help lower the risk is, you know, if you're putting that band out there, try not to plant corn back over the band, you know, try to be, you know, four, six, eight inches off the band when you actually plant. Um, you know, I think that's one thing that can help quite a bit. You know, you get on contours and some stuff like that, it does get a little harder to stay off of it. But, you know, little things can help. And also, you know, in general, there's a, you need to wait after putting in hydrous on to plant corn. You know, there's not a real set number of days, you know, it depends who you talk to and some different things, but the longer you wait, the better. Yeah, and with all the GPS steering technology out there, staying off of those bands is a little bit easier than what it used to be uh, 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, moving on to urea, Brian, we've had a lot of questions around, you know, especially around some of our minimum till or no-till growers, you know, they were planning to use urea, maybe didn't get it applied as it was cooler and we had some rain, you know, 10, 15 days ago. You know, what should be some of our advice to those growers that need to make those urea applications but maybe don't have the opportunity to get it incorporated? Yeah, when you think about, you know, the, the issue here with urea at surface applied is volatilization. So that's where it, it basically volatilizes and goes up into the atmosphere and never gets into the soil. So it's usable for the crop. So volatilization generally gets worse the hotter it is and the more humid it is. So, you know, if, if you haven't had a rainfall, which usually a quarter inch will wash that urea right into the soil and you're good to go. You know, some things you can do is use a urease, urease inhibitor. Um, they can help quite a bit to stop volatilization, but you know, in general, the drier conditions on the soil is going to help in the short term. But, you know, if it, the warmer it gets, the more humid it is, the more chance there is for loss. Yeah, a urease inhibitor impregnated onto that urea would be a really good option. Another option in some parts of our geography where it's available is maybe trying to utilize ESN with some of those applications. You know, a polymer coated control release urea would give you some really good uh, safety net there and buying some time till we get some, some rain to work some of that nitrogen. Uh, into the soil. Both good options. The other thing, Brian, you know, even our guys that are doing conventional tillage, you know, we're kind of in a window now where if we're applying urea, we, our window to get that incorporated, we'd like that within, you know, 12 to 24 hours at the most to get that incorporated just to prevent that potential of loss. Yep. Yeah. That's always the sooner the better, you know, if you can get it applied, get it worked in within the day. And then also, you know, after you get it work like normal, try to wait a day after that before you would actually plant corn. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of stuff going on out there, Brian. The weather's been great, you know, and really we want to be planting corn, make sure we're taking care of that nitrogen. Those are the big two topics we wanted to hit on this week's podcast. Brian, it's always important for people that are listening for the first time, where do we find our podcast and also find some previous episodes? Yeah, so we both tweeted out, so I am at Farmer Buck One. And I am at Josh Schaffner. And also, if you talk to your local sales rep, they would also have it in an email form, which you can get it from them also. Yep. If, you, if you're not on Twitter or you're not on the Eels email list, you can also go to YouTube.com, uh, type in either of our names, Josh Schaffner or Brian Buck, followed by Pioneer, and they will all pop up and you can take a look at those and listen to previous shows as well. Brian, kind of a short week, but this is a wrap for this week's podcast. Uh, this podcast is recorded from the Agronomy Bunker Studio in Sombrota, Minnesota. It is produced by Brian Buck and Josh Schaffner. This is a bi-weekly podcast. Thanks for listening, and be sure to tune in next time.